It's been a little over a year and a half since we've checked out a resin printer on this channel. This isn't due to a lack of new releases, but more so that I just haven't been doing a lot of resin printing. The technology is absolutely mind-blowing for highly detailed designs, and I really enjoy testing out new resins with unique properties. But you really need a dedicated station for handling and post-processing, which has been one of my bigger dilemmas. On top of that, I feel like the main improvement for most of these machines for quite a while was in screen resolution. This is fine and dandy, but there got to a point where the resolution was so good you couldn't see much improvement, and I really wanted to see advancements in other areas. Well, when Elegoo reached out to me a few months ago about testing their new Saturn IV Ultra, I was really curious to see what, if anything, had changed since I'd last tested out a resin printer. Some of the features listed seemed pretty unique, and I agreed to take a look. It's been a couple of months now and I've had time to run a handful of tests and get plenty of hands on time with this machine. So in today's video, we'll be diving into the Saturn IV Ultra. We'll go over the printer's specs, what setup was like, how it's performed, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting with the specs, the Saturn IV Ultra is an MSLA style resin 3D printer using a 10 inch 12K mono LCD screen. This gives you a resolution of 19 microns in X and 24 in Y. I'd consider the Saturn IV Ultra a mid-size resin printer. Its build volume is 218 by 122 by 220 millimeters. For motion, the build plate rides up and down on two linear rails and a lead screw. The build plate on this machine is very unique compared to other resin printers I've used. Typically, Elegoo has used a pivoting ball and single knob to align the plate to the screen. On this printer, there's a single latch that clamps it onto the Z-axis. The aluminum plate is rigid mounted on eight standoffs to a thick upper portion of the assembly. There is zero adjustment to be done by the end user. The bed comes aligned to the LCD screen, and with the latch and standoffs, something would have to either come loose or go terribly wrong for it to lose its alignment. The plate's angled on top to prevent resin from pulling on it, and the surface has a light etching to help with adhesion when printing. This printer has some pretty wild speed claims, stating that it can reach a max of 150 millimeters per hour. This is much quicker than any resin printer I've ever used. A big part of what helps with speed is the VATS tilt functionality. All the printers I've used have a build plate that's parallel to the VAT. The LCD screen displays an image for the current layer, and once cured, the plate lifts up to release that cured layer from the film. This process is then repeated for every layer until the print completes. The downside of this is that the lifting process takes time, and multiplied by hundreds or even thousands of layers, that can really add up. Additionally, on a large print that has a lot of surface area, that pull force can be quite substantial. I've experienced it deforming prints to completely pulling them off of the build plate mid-print. With the Saturn IV Ultra, the build plate is still parallel to the vat, however, the entire vat has the ability to tilt. So instead of the build plate lifting and dropping each time, the vat does a quick tilt motion to break the seal from the current layer and the film. This reduces the time between each layer, along with the peel force since this is happening at an angle instead of all at once. It also simplifies slicer settings by removing the entire section about lifting. The vat itself is made of aluminum and has two sloped corners to help with pouring resin back into a bottle. It has a max fill line and is secured in place using two large thumb screws. It seems like the film used has changed from the FEP I remember, and the Saturn IV Ultra is instead using PFA. The product page states it has higher performance and less sticking, which makes it easier for the prints to peel off. I haven't done a side-by-side, -side, but I did find an interesting test by LitCreate for anyone interested that'll have linked in the description. There's a camera inside of the printer labeled AI Camera. This lets you monitor prints, create time lapses, and is supposed to have some failure detection functionality, which we'll touch more on later. Another difference between this printer and any other I've used is the hood. Other than the Piopoli machines, the printers I've tested require you to lift off the cover completely to access inside of the machine. I've never understood this. It means that you have to use both hands, which is often less than ideal when you're handling resin. It also means you have to have plenty of space above your printer to be able to lift it off completely. On this printer, Elegoo went with a tilting hood, which requires much less vertical space. 
You can lift it with one hand, but since it's nearly flush with the base, I wish they had included a handle or knob to grab onto. One thing I noticed on the hood of my unit is a striped pattern along the entirety of the acrylic. I don't know if this is a manufacturing defect, but using some acrylic cleaner and elbow grease doesn't seem to help with removing it. It's purely cosmetic, but it is a bit disappointing considering how nice the rest of this machine looks. Interfacing with the printer is done using a 4 inch vertical touchscreen on the front of the machine. I found the screen and menu system to be fairly easy to use, but I could see there being a complaint about small text due to its orientation. On the right side, we have our power input, on off rocker switch, full size USB port, and antenna. Yes, this printer has Wi Fi, which lets you wirelessly transfer prints from your computer directly to the machine or remotely check on it. If you prefer not to use it, then any flash drive will also work for transferring files. The printer came packaged very nicely and setup was a breeze. The process involves removing film from the screen on the front, the film on the vat, the LCD screen underneath the vat, and the build plate. Then screwing in the antenna onto the side of the machine and it's ready to power on. Each time the printer is powered on, it runs through a self-test. This is a quick process that checks the screen connection, that the motors are working correctly, along with the internal light source and fan. There's also a temp check and mechanical sensor check. Looking through the menu system, a lot of the stuff is pretty standard, but there are a couple of items worth pointing out. The first is print mode. For this, you have standard and high speed. The only thing this changes is the VAT tilt peeling speed. I ran high speed initially, but ended up swapping over to standard when I changed resins to one that had a bit of an adhesion issue. Another unique one is resin calibrate. This lets you run multiple exposures on the same plate of parts, which can be really handy when trying to determine the best settings for a new resin. There's a brief explanation of this on the screen, but I didn't really find much info on it. Doing a search online, I stumbled across Foxhammer's video, which was super helpful. He also reviewed this printer and I'll have a link to his video in the description. Clicking on the button in the center lets you run four, six, or eight exposure tests. This essentially divides the screen into four, six, or eight segments. Then you can click on each of these and set the exposure time you want for that section of the screen. The downside of this is that you have to slice a file and choose the model for this test. It would have been much simpler if Elegoo had just incorporated some kind of a default built-in model. Using the forward segment test as an example, in the slicer you need to place a model on each corner of the plate. Horizontally and vertically, it's as if the plate is now four smaller plates, so just make sure your model doesn't cross over the halfway points. I just went with a built-in calibration file from the slicer, then slice up the model and put it on the printer. Back in the resin calibration menu, click the plus sign, then select the model you just sliced. Finally, press play to start the print. I ran it without any resin just to show what it looks like with my 2, 3, 4, and 5 second range exposure test. The test is really nice to have, but the lack of instructions or built-in model makes it much more cumbersome than it really needs to be. The printer came with a pre-sliced Rook model, which has been Elegoo's test file since the first Mars I tested, but I decided to go big right away. This printer shipped with a beta version of Chit2Box Basic that had the Saturn IV Ultra Profile built in. Chit2Box had an update when I launched, so I installed it right away and I've been running version 2.2. I used Chitu Manager to scan for printers on my network and pairing the Saturn was really simple. For the first print, I went with a Samus bust from Photos Mint. His models have pre-hollowed and pre-supported versions, so all I did was import, press slice, and transfer the file to the printer. I've been holding onto some of Elegoo's rapid standard gray resin, so I filled up the vat to the max line with it and fired off the print. This was the first time I got to see the tilting function in action, and I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. The print completed without any issues and a couple hours quicker than the time estimate in the slicer. I followed this up with another large photos print of an Aztec dragon and was really happy with the results I was getting. The gray resin really shows a lot of the detail and just like before, I'm still blown away by how clean resin prints can be. One thing I was curious about were the speed claims on the product page. While this printer was printing at speeds faster than other machines I've used, it definitely wasn't hitting that 150 millimeters per hour. So I reached out to Elegoo to ask about what parameters were used and needed to achieve this. They gave me a pretty detailed reply, which I'll post on screen, but it felt a little bit like a runaround answer. Not that the information provided wasn't correct, but I would have loved to have been given some example parameters or a model that they've had success with. 
Playing around with the slicer, it looked like I could achieve this speed if I bumped the layer height from the default 50 microns to 200 microns. I tried this with my ModBot mascot robot using the default values and it completed without issue. However, when I increased the layer height to 0.2 in an attempt to reach the max speeds, the model tore off of its supports. I really don't know how realistic it is to be able to achieve those max claimed speeds. It seems like the machine is capable of curing and moving at those values, but what model, resin, and parameters are needed seem like some serious tuning may be required. I do wish they had an asterisk on that spec on the product page with some of the info I was sent to set a bit more realistic expectation. Next, I poured in some Elegoo thermochromatic resin that I've also been sitting on for a while. I noticed right away that this resin had a higher viscosity than I was used to. This would have been a good time to use the built-in calibration function, but I ended up sending off a print from Wexter of the Ghoul. I can't say I was super surprised when two of the prints fell off of the build plate. I ended up doing a bit of digging into the specific resin and I really didn't find a whole lot of info on it. I ended up swapping the printer from fast mode to normal mode and slightly increased the layer times, which gave me much more success. I still had some slight lifting, but thanks to the supports, it didn't actually impact the model itself. While this resin is a bit trickier to print with, the thermal color changing properties are sweet. I hit the model with a heat gun so you can see the gray turn to purple. I'm sure some will have ideas on how this can be used for functional applications. Regarding the camera, the printer doesn't have any internal lights, so unless you have room lights on, you will not get a great view of your print. However, with my studio lights on, I was pretty pleased with the quality I was getting, and the time lapses are definitely a fun add. When I reached out about the print speed, I also asked about the AI functionality. I was told that the AI camera has plate detection and edge warping detection, and they didn't recommend purposefully causing a crash to test the functionality, but after my robot falling off the supports and another failed print that didn't trigger it, I have my doubts about how well this functionality actually works. For viewing, I like that it's there, but like much of these AI detection claims on FDM printers, it feels a bit like a marketing buzzword more than anything else based on my time with it. One thing I do want to touch on with this printer is the mechanical sensor. I didn't see a ton of info on specifics, but there's a mechanical sensor within the machine that lets it know when the build plate has reached the LCD screen. This is part of what makes the machine not require setting a Z offset, and it has some additional features. The first is resin detection. Now, I don't think this is highly accurate in that it can't tell you if you have enough resin in your vat for a print, but if you do something silly, like try to start a print without resin, it will notify you that the minimum amount of resin is not detected. You can then stop the print or let it continue. The functionality I was more interested in is the one that would prevent your LCD screen from being completely destroyed. Years ago, I had a piece of support fall off of my Saturn printer without realizing it, and when I started the next printer and it went to home, it shoved that piece of resin in through the FEP film into the LCD screen and shattered it. While I don't recommend purposefully testing this functionality, I decided to do so. So I broke a few pieces off of a mini that I damaged during support removal, threw them in the vat, and fired up a print. I was pretty nervous as the bed dropped and really hoped I wasn't going to completely destroy this LCD screen. Well, no error popped up and the print started. So I stopped the print, lifted the plate, and took a look beneath. The larger piece of cured resin, which is what the plate landed on, is what took the main impact. It left a decent sized indentation in my film to where I wouldn't feel comfortable using it without replacing, but the screen was unscathed. I saw a small dot where the printed part had pressed on it, but using a microfiber, it came right off. This is a feature I am really happy about. Sure, having to swap out the film is inconvenient, but it is much less expensive than the $50 to $100 LCD screen, and I can just about guarantee that it is going to save quite a few people from accidentally destroying their screens. So what are my thoughts based on my time so far with the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra? Overall, my time with this printer has been largely positive. The new plate system that doesn't require any adjustment or Z offset is really nice and removes a pain point of resin printers. I'm a big fan of the tilting vat. The only other printer I know that uses something similar is Prusa's SL1S. This allows for much quicker printing and less stress on large parts during the peeling process. I also really like the tilting lid. And while the AI camera feels a little gimmicky to me, being able to check in on prints is a nice feature. For things that can be improved on, I mentioned the striped marks or scratches on the top acrylic panel. The resin exposure test is a bit clunky and should have a built-in model, and I feel like the max speeds shown on the product page are a bit misleading. 
The previous Saturn I tested had a built-in USB port internally for a carbon filter, which is something that I really wish they had brought back with the 4 Ultra. They have battery powered options, but they're not nearly as convenient. While this printer doesn't have a heated chamber, it does have a chamber sensor, and there is an upgrade option available for a heater. While this might not be necessary for everyone, some of the engineering resins can definitely benefit from it, and if you're printing in a colder environment like a garage during wintertime, that heater can be very handy. At the time of recording, the printer is on pre-order for $399, which is pretty incredible considering what this machine offers. For someone looking to get their first resin 3D printer or upgrade from an older one, the Saturn IV Ultra is a solid contender. The next big thing I'm waiting on is a more automated cleaning solution. Support removal, washing, and curing is still a very messy process, and I really hope we see improvements in this section of the resin printing process. And that has been the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you might have had about this machine. As always, if you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And if you don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to Elegoo to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.